Ah, love, let us be true to one another, for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And we are here as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. How can anyone not love that? I do not get it. Hey, happy homeschoolers. It's Lindsay from Hearth and Story, and today I'm going to tell you how I solved my biggest homeschooling regret from my older son um, in time to homeschool my younger son. So some of you might know I have an older son and a younger son and a daughter in the middle. And between the oldest and the youngest, there's actually 12 school years, which is a huge age difference. It's what has changed is amazing. It's amazing, you know, how many more curriculum options, how many more activities there are to do, how much more accepted homeschooling has become between the oldest and the youngest. And I was thinking back, um, you know, as my oldest was graduating from college, I was thinking, you know, what are some of my regrets that I could maybe fix or change um, on the other kid, the little guy? So the biggest regret of all is that my oldest son despises poetry. He hates it and I love it. So uh, what went wrong? What do we need to do and how do we fix it? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I had to, you know, I talked to my older son about it and tried to figure out what went wrong and why poetry does not resonate with him. And I came up with basically two big themes. Number one, old fashioned language, archaic language, the, thou, thine, or, you know, that sort of thing. And then number two, a lot of religious content. So we're a secular homeschooling family. We are not um, very, you know, strongly religious. And because of that, just because so many poems are religious that and on top of that would then have the the old-fashioned language as well and on top of that the layer of poetry being just harder to understand than regular speech that really made poetry a little bit less accessible for him so going into the study of poetry for my youngest i decided to try to use poems as much as possible not always with a little bit more modern language and of course to use poetry that is secular in nature, just for these younger grades um, to make it a little more accessible to them. So what we did in Hearth and Story is um, we have a poem every week and they're all in the public domain so that we're able to publish them, um, but they're not super, super old. So we have poems from the 1920s in here that are gonna be written in a language that's just everyday speech, you know, pretty close to everyday speech that kids will be able to understand it's not full of the thine and thou the whole time. We will do that in older years, but we don't need to do that with 11 year olds. We don't need to go that far. So uh, we have a poem every week. You read the poem and it's actually made onto a coloring sheet, just almost like an adult coloring book style coloring sheet. Not, It's not something that's cartoonish and babyish. Um, and if they want to, they can color it. If they don't want to, they don't have to. It's up to them. And uh, they'll read the poem and then they uh, do a little bit of analyzing of it. And they also have flashcards to really help build up that knowledge of literary terms. That was another thing that my older son, he just felt like there were so many literary terms he had to learn and they didn't necessarily get drilled in as well as he would like. So what we did was we created a set of flashcards. Um, you can actually print them on your own printer at home. We laminated ours. I just like laminating things. You don't even have to do that really, but we like it. Um, and we go through them every week and really with every poem, we're adding a new flashcard. So here's metaphor, here's simile, assonance, consonance, hyperbole, all of that is in there. And you just have to learn like one a week that is, you know, shows up in that poem of the week. And then the next week, you're going to be reviewing the ones that you've already learned. So by the time you get to the end of fifth grade, you're going to have a pretty good grasp of most of the major literary terms that are going to come up. And you will have analyzed, you know, a few dozen poems that hopefully, you know, resonated with you a little better than some of the ones my son had to read. So it looks like this is a problem solved, at least in our family. My youngest son is loving poetry. He doesn't dread it. He doesn't groan when I bring it out. He's pretty into it. So that's a huge improvement. 
um, that love of poetry. I'm hoping to pass that on to at least one of my children um, who will love it just as much as I do. And I, I think there's still hope for the oldest. I'm going to be getting on him about this. Thanks for joining us today. That's all I have. Happy homeschooling.